good morning all of you so let me discuss the kinematics of camps and followers in this uh, session so this is another uh, mechanism which is widely used in the construction of automatic machines particularly you might have seen the closing and opening of ic engine balls the movement of the walls is controlled by the common follower mechanism similarly in many applications in textile machinery printing machinery right this uh, cam and followers are used to convert the motion from one form to another form okay so the cam and follower mechanism is widely used for operating the inlet and ex exhaust valves of ic engines right as we have uh, discussed the opening and closing of uh, ic engine valves uh, is uh, done by the provision of camshaft right the camshaft which is uh, provided with uh, suitable cam profiles and these cam profiles are uh, mated with uh, corresponding followers right so this uh, followers uh, causes the opening and closing of ic engine walls right similarly in the wall clocks to get a definite uh, motion to the uh, wall clocks this uh, cam profiles are used or cam and follower mechanisms are used okay and another most important application here uh, the cam and follower is the feed mechanism of automatic lathe machines uh, in automatic lathe machines uh, the feed uh, uh, is given with the help of this uh, cam and follower mechanisms similarly in paper cutting machines weaving machinery textile machinery all these uh, in all these cases the motion conversion are to impart definite motion to the the output end the cam and follower mechanisms are widely used now we'll see the what do you mean by cam and follower and what are the definitions of this in the introduction part right if you look at this uh, pictorial representation animated view of this uh, simple uh, cam and follower right so this uh, blue represents a uh, blue uh, one represents a cam which is mounted on a shaft let us take this is a cam shaft right so the cam shaft is a uh, rotating one that means the shaft is uh, rotating one here that means it is a driving one obviously the cam which is mounted on the shaft with the help of uh, keyways it is also subjected to the rotation right but uh, the shape of the cam is of uh, uh, some irregular shape and due to the and this uh, cam is mounted on the shaft eccentrically and due to the rotation of this cam the follower takes the uh, corresponding motion so what type of motion is attained for the follower here it is a reciprocating motion or a translatory motion in the vertical direction translatory motion in the vertical direction okay so the cam is a mechanical member used to impart a definite motion to the follower so a cam is a mechanical member used to impart definite motion to a follower by direct contact so here the cam and follower both are having direct contact this contact may be either point contact or line contact hence it belongs to higher phase of uh, uh, kinematics so uh, we have uh, two types of kinematic pair solar pair and higher pair so since uh, this uh, cam and follower mechanism consists of uh, point contact or line contact obviously it belongs to higher pairs okay by this uh, direct contact uh, the the motion of uh, cam is uh, transmitted to the the follower but it is not exact more it is not uh, exact conversion right so based on the profile of the cam you will get uh, different motions to the follower end that's why it imparts a desired motion to the follower it imparts a desired motion so depending on the type of motion required at the output end you have to select suitable uh, type of uh, uh, suitable profile on the cam okay so that's why the cram profile is uh, more important here in generating uh, proper uh, or uh, definite motions or uh, required motions right the cam may be a rotating or a reciprocating right so here in this case the cam is 
a rotating one, right? Sometimes the cam may be a reciprocating one, whereas the follower consists of a rotating motion or a reciprocating motion or oscillatory motion. Okay, so the complicated output motions, which are otherwise difficult to achieve, can easily be produced with the help of cam. So that is the the biggest advantage of uh, cam and follower mechanisms. Uh, this uh, cam and follower mechanisms produces uh, the complicated motions, uh, which are uh, uh, very difficult to produce by other type of mechanisms, particularly the motions required in automatic machines, uh, automatic uh, uh, machines like CNC machines or automatic feeding mechanisms or uh, the automatic machines used in our textile industries. In all these cases, uh, the output motions are very complicated ones. Such type of uh, complicated output motions can be easily produced with the help of this uh, cam and follower mechanism. Cams are widely used in automatic machines, combustion engines, machine tools, printing and control mechanisms and so on. Right? So these are manufactured usually by die casting method, milling, uh, by punch presses. The cams are generally manufactured by using our die casting, using a casting technique. If the size of the cam is very much large, obviously we can go for the die casting process. If it is a smaller ones, smaller in size, compact in size, obviously you can go for your machining technique, particularly milling machine. Milling can be used. Similarly, in a single take by using a punch presses also you can produce the cams of uh, different profiles uh, right the cam and follower combination belongs to the category of fire pairs uh, as uh, the contact between the cam and the follower is a point or line contact that's why it belongs to higher pairs okay so here any cam and follower mechanism consists of uh, three elements driver member driven member and the guiding member or the supporting member right so the driver member is known as a cam driven member or the one which is driven by the cam is nothing but a follower right which follows uh, uh, the motion of another driving uh, member is called a follower and the third element is the frame which supports the cam and the follower or yeah, it uh, provides any guidance to the uh, motion of the follower that is called the frame okay so these three are the elements of uh, cam and follower mechanisms right and look at the animated uh, uh, view of this uh, cam and follower mechanisms uh, like it is uh, uh, the walls of your ic engine this is a camshaft mounted with uh, two cam profiles right and these are the uh, followers just like uh, walls of ic engine right both the cam profile both the cams mounted on this camshaft are having same profiles uh, but uh, the two cams are uh, mounted on this shaft uh, right with uh, different orientations uh, with certain offset obviously the rotation of two cams causes the opening and closing of uh, these uh, follower movements or the walls at uh, different intervals of time so that's how the opening and closing of IC engine walls uh, can be uh, done by using cam and follower mechanism. Okay, I hope it is uh, clear by looking at the animated uh, video. Right, the next part, uh, types of uh, cams. Right, in this introduction part, uh, first we will see the classification of cams and later we will classify the followers, the types of followers. Right, the cams are generally classified according to uh, three parameters, right? Based on the shape of the cam and based on the follower movement, uh, the type of uh, movement attained at the follower and the manner of constraint of the follower, the way in, which, in the way uh, the follower is uh, get constrained uh, to get a different motion. It is another uh, parameter to consider the classification of cams. So the clams are classified based on three parameters, so based on the shape of the cam, based on its follower movement, and the third one is based on the manner of constraint uh, considered for the uh, follower motion, right? 
So first we will classify based on the shape of the cam, right? According to the shape of the cam, the cams are classified into different varieties. Under this, the first one is, right? First one is a wedge and flat uh, cam, wedge and flat cam, right? So, right, wedge cam has a wedge W, which is uh, in general has uh, translatory motion. Right, look at this uh, figure A. This uh, figure A, this is uh, a wedge block which is uh, provided with a translatory motion in the horizontal direction. Right, so due to this rotation, sorry, due to this uh, translatory movement, uh, the follower which is in contact with uh, this uh, cam uh, takes the up and down movement or translation move, translatory movement in the vertical direction, and this is the guide which supports the. Uh, which guides the movement of the uh, follower and this uh, follower is uh, supported with a spring element here to get uh, the restoring of its uh, position or uh, orientation right so f indicates the follower and this uh, w indicates the wedge uh, shaped cam here the cam is provided with the horizontal translatory movement and the corresponding follower takes uh, vertical translatory movement okay so this is the example for wedge cam okay right what type of contact we have here between the follower and the cam since the follower is a uh, knife edged uh, follower here which is having a point contact with the uh, surface of the cam the follower f uh, can either translate or oscillate right so the, in the first case, that means in figure A, the follower F is a translating member, and in the figure B, the follower F is a, an oscillating member. Look at this. The, here, the follower is a roller follower, which is attached to a uh, pivot le pivoted lever, and this lever is constrained with the help of a spring element here, right? And look at the cam here. The cam is here also wedge shape but it is not a flat shape with a wedge here it is provided with a slight uh, curved shape as usual if you consider slight translatory motion uh, translatory motion along the horizontal direction the follower or the roller follower oscillates about this pivot point uh, oscillates about this pivot point and the next one is so look at the figure c here right the cam is fixed one here. The cam is, is a fixed one and the follower takes vertical translatory motion. Vertical translatory motion, right? The cam is stationary and the follower constraint or guide the G causes the relative motion of the cam and the follower. So here, if you apply force on this uh, plunger type of uh, guiding attachment, uh, this is a guide which is provided with a plunger and this plunger causes the follower to take uh, left and right movement. At the same time, it takes vertical upward and downward movement. That means the follower movement is uh, controlled by the guide here, whereas the cam is a fixed one or the stationary one here. Okay, that's how uh, the first type of uh, cam based on its shape, wedge and uh, flat cam, can be uh, defined, right? and look at this uh, pictorial representation this is a wedge cam right so this is a wedge surface which is uh, free to take uh, horizontal translatory motion and this uh, cam is free to take a vertical uh, translatory motion okay right next the second variety of cam is a radial or disc cam radial or disc cam so if the shape of the cam is of uh, a disc type uh, then this is called a disc cam right the cam in which the follower moves radially uh, follower moves radially from the center of rotation of the cam from the center of rotation of cam is known as a radial or disc cam look at this this is a radial cam this is a cam surface right which is uh, pivoted eccentrically at this point when you consider the rotation of this cam, the roller follower, which is in contact with the cam, takes vertical up and down motion that is called a translatory motion. Right? 
suppose if we can so that means this uh, cam is uh, a circular member it is not exactly circular profile here it is uh, provided with uh, a profile with the number of uh, radii of curvatures right so now here this follower is engaged with the cam in radial direction that means the axis of the follower axis of the follower follows or passes through the center of the cam the axis of the follower passes through the center of the cam such type of uh, uh, cams are known as the radial cams such type of cams are known as radial cams even uh, you can look at this uh, second figure so look at this the axis of the follower passes through the the center of the cam where it is uh, pivoted okay right so when the cam rotates the follower takes uh, vertical translatory motion so here also look at this this uh, uh, here the cam is uh, inscribed in a follower the cam is inscribed in a follower right but the axis of the follower passing through this center of the cam here once again the cam is pivoted at this point and this point pivot point lies on the axis of the cam when this uh, cam rotates right follower takes vertical translatory motion okay so these are the examples of radial or this cam since the cam is a disc type of member that's why it is called disc cam and the other name is given for this cam that is a radial cam because uh, the axis of the follower passes through the center of uh, or the fixed point of uh, cam that's why it is said to be a radial cam the radial cams are very popular due to their simplicity and compactness right so this can be used in very the limited space requirements right then next type of cam is a spiral cam right so the cam is provided with a groove in the shape of a spiral right spiral uh, spiral cam is a face cam in which the groove is cut in the form of a spiral as shown in the figure look at this this is a cam and the uh, the surface of the cam provided with a spiral type of groove here and this groove is engaged with the the follower right so that means the here some type of teeth are provided on this uh, spiral groove and these teeth are engaged with the uh, corresponding portion of uh, follower right so the spiral groove consists of teeth which mesh with the pin gear follower pin gear follower the velocity of the follower is proportional to the radial distance of the groove from the axis of the cam so this is the axis of the cam so the distance of this uh, groove from the center is called radial distance right so this radial distance gradually increases when you move from this end to this end so the velocity of the follower is uh, proportional to the radial distance of the groove okay the use of such cam is limited as the cam has uh, has to reverse the direction to reset the position of the follower it finds use in the so this uh, cam is very uh, limited applications because the reversing is uh, very difficult here uh, if you use a spiral cam so these are very really, uh, widely used in the computer hardware applications right i hope it is clear next one cylindrical cams the cam profile is cylindrical in shape that's why this cam is called cylindrical cam in cylindrical cam which has a circumferential contour cut the cylindrical surface or the circumferential surface of the cylinder is cut into a groove right so this is a contour cut and this in this contour the follower edge is uh, uh, fixed right when this uh, cylinder rotates uh, the follower also takes the corresponding motion if you can look at this uh, figure here the cylindrical surface is uh, provided with a contour of different shapes uh, right so this is cylindrical follower and this is end uh, cylindrical uh, cam so the end surface of the cylinder mated with uh, the follower right when you rotate this uh, cam then the corresponding translatory movement you can attain in the case of uh, this type of cylindrical cam 
right the follower motion can be of uh, two types as follows in the first type groove is cut on the surface of the cam and the roller follower has uh, constrained uh, oscillatory motion so in the first case we have oscillatory motion this uh, follower provide with or imparts with uh, oscillatory motion and this follower imparts with uh, uh, translatory motion okay so another type is end cam right in which the end of the cylinder is the working surface when you rotate the cam or when you rotate the cylindrical cam then the follower translates uh, uh, in uh, line with the the axis of the cam the spring loaded follower translates along or parallel to the axis of the rotating cylinder that is called end cam okay then uh, fifth type of uh, uh, cam based on its uh, shape is a conjugate cam so conjugate cam is a double disc cam the two disc are uh, keyed together and are in constant touch with the uh, two rollers of the follower thus the follower has a positive constraint so here there are uh, two cams here and two cams are mounted with uh, two follower ends right so two follower ends are pivoted at same point right so due to this type of uh, uh, provision you will get a positive constraint right such a type of uh, cam is preferred when the requirements are low wear no low noise better control of the follower high speeds high dynamic loads etc these are all uh, uh, the applications of uh, conjugate cams right next one is a uh, globoidal cams globoidal cams instead of considering cylindrical surface if you consider hyperboloid right upper hyperboloid uh, hyperboloid surface on the surface of the cylinder or if you consider a convex surface or concave surface on the surface of the cylinder then you will get uh, uh, a globoidal cam right globoidal cam can be of two types uh, consists of two types of surfaces right either uh, convex surface or concave sur concave surface the circumferential contour is cut on the surface right surface of uh, rotation so even uh, in the cylindrical cams also we have considered same thing but the surface of the cam is a cylindrical one but here the cross section is changing from uh, point to point on the axis of the cylinder so that means here this cylinder is provided with a convex surface and here this cylinder is provided with a concave surface and this concave or convex surface uh, uh, of the cylinder uh, cut with a groove of different contours and this uh, grooves are engaged with the followers when you rotate these cylinders then obviously the corresponding oscillatory movement you can get at the follower end the application of such cams limited to moderate speeds where the angle of oscillation of the follower is large so unlike your uh, uh, cylindrical cams uh, the follower oscillation angle is very much high in the case of globoidal cams then the next type of uh, cam based on its uh, shape is spherical cam in a spherical cam the follower oscillates about the axis the follower oscillates about the axis perpendicular to the axis of surface of rotation of the cam right so look at this the cam is a spherical member cube and the spherical surface of this uh, cam is uh, uh, cut with a groove and this groove is mated with the, the corresponding element of uh, a follower and the follower is uh, constrained with the help of a spring element when this uh, spherical member rotates eccentrically then obviously the follower also takes oscillatory motion but the axis of oscillation is exactly perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the spherical cam okay so note that in this cam the follower oscillates about axis parallel to the axis of rotation of the cam so in this cams the follower oscillates about the axis which is parallel to the axis of cam but here the axis of cam and the follower axis both are mutually perpendicular okay the spherical cam is in the form of a spherical surface which transmits the motion to the follower okay 
so this is the first classification based on the shape of uh, cam we can classify the cams into different varieties okay right then next classification is based on the follower movement classification of cams according to the follower movement so the follower movement is generally classified into three uh, different uh, uh, the follower movement is generally uh, classified into three different varieties uh, rise movement dwell movement and return movement uh, rise dwell return okay so rise is the most of the follower away from the cam center most of the follower away from the cam center the follower will have a direct contact with the cam when the cam rotates the follower also takes the corresponding uh, oscillatory motion or the translatory motion right depending on the profile of the cam the follower takes the corresponding movement uh, whether it is moving close to the cam center or away from the cam center the movement uh, of the follower when it moves for, uh, away from the uh, cam or when it moves away from the cam center is uh, denoted with the word uh, rise and the movement of the follower when it uh, moves close to the cam or uh, the most of the follower towards the cam center towards the cam center it is called a uh, return right and even when the cam rotates or when the cam takes the motion the follower is at rest uh, follower will not attain any motion whether it is a translatory or a uh, oscillatory motion whatever it is right that means the follower is said to be at rest the follower is said to be at rest that uh, type of motion that condition of the follower movement is called well right the three conditions of follower movements are rise dwell return rise is movement of the follower away from the cam center return is the movement of the follower towards the cam center well is the movement of the uh, the stationary uh, position of the follower even when the cam takes a motion that is called the dwell period based on these uh, movements uh, you can classify the camps into uh, three different varieties rise return rise camps rise return rise camps that means the movement of the follower alternatively follows a rise and return movements right so there is alternate rise and return of the follower with um, no periods of wells so in between rise and return there is no question of dwells right the follower has a linear or angular displacement so based on these movements you can call this uh, cam as a triple or cam rise return rise then there is a slight modification for this uh, rise return cam if the dwell uh, periods are placed uh, at the starting of its movement and at the end of the movement then this is called well rise return well okay so in such type of uh, cam there is a rise and return of the uh, follower after well right so this uh, type is used more frequently than a triple or type because uh, uh, well periods are common in uh, cam and follower mechanisms uh, it is most widely used type of cam right then like your uh, second variety of uh, cam based on its follower movement uh, the dwell periods are placed at the beginning and at the end of the follower movement uh, but in between the rise and return of the follower movement also there is a dwell period uh, there is a dwell period uh, right so here this is a rise period and this is a return period uh, right the axis axis or the x coordinate is the cam movement angle and y coordinate indicates the follower displacement right so here also this is a dwell period and this is a dwell period there is no follower movement at all and this is a rising moving away from the cam center and this is moving close to the cam center right so next one is look at this this is 
12 rise, 12 return, 12 lakh. So 12 period always uh, represented on this uh, graphical representation between cam uh, movement and the follower movement with a horizontal line. So this is a 12 movement and uh, 12 period. Uh, this is a 12 period. And at the end, there is a 12 period here. This is a rise and this is a return. So that's how you can uh, represent graphically this uh, 12 rise, 12 return, 12 camps, right? So sometimes the return period is uh, completely eliminated by taking sudden fall, right? In case of uh, return of the follower is by fall, fall the motion may be uh, expressed like this, well rise, well, well rise, well. There is no return here. Once again, it starts with uh, well here. Fall is nothing but sudden uh, uh, falling is nothing but without any uh, velocity it reaches to the uh, rest position without any time lapse, right? The follower uh, reaches to the rest position. Okay, so without any time lapse uh, means, that means the X coordinate becomes zero here, right? So within uh, uh, less amount of time, it reaches to the rest position. That's why there is no return period here, right? Once again, it starts with the del rise 12. So this is DRD. First one is only three letters, rise, return, rise. Second one is dwell, rise, return, dwell. And third one is five letters, dwell, rise, dwell, return, dwell. Alternate dwell periods. Okay. So that is based on the type of follower movement. And the third classification is according to the manner of constraint of the follower. Constraint is nothing but restraint or uh, restraint to the motion, right? So when you discuss uh, degrees of freedom, we might have uh, discussed this uh, constraints or restraints, uh, right? Constraint is nothing but uh, the restraints to the, the free motion of the body, right? So the follower following certain motions, right? So what way? the definite motion is imparted to the follower by taking different uh, constraints right so this uh, follower movement is constrained otherwise you cannot get uh, a definite motion at the uh, follower end okay so the function of cam is to impart a definite motion to the follower right to get a definite motion the follower must be constrained in a uh, proper way Otherwise, you cannot get the definite motion. You may get uh, different varieties of motions, which may not be useful in uh, executing the work, right? So to produce exactly the motion transmitted by the cam to the follower, it is necessary that two remain in touch at all speeds and at all times. Okay, so the cam and follower mechanism transmits the motion by direct contact, right? So to transmit this motion, the two elements must be in contact at all times, at all the speeds. Otherwise, you cannot get the motion transmission, right? And you need to uh, constrain the members in such a way that this uh, contact is uh, continuous. The camps can be classified according to the manner in which this is achieved, right? So based on this, preloaded spring camp. Preloaded compression spring is used for the purpose of uh, keeping the contact between the cam and the follower. So the contact between the cam and the follower is uh, maintained, right, by a compression helical spring, right. So then the cam is known as a preloaded spring cam. Then positive drive cam. In this type, con cons constant touch between the cam and the follower is maintained by roller follower operating in the groove of the cam so the follower the provide with a pin at the end and this pin is uh, inserted in the groove uh, on the cam and due to this the continuous contact is maintained so that uh, you can get the continuous uh, motion transmission and uh, definite motion transmission right the follower can not go out uh, of this crew under normal working conditions. Hence, uh, um, in 
you will get a constraint or positive drive uh, is obtained by the use of this uh, positive drive cam. The best example for this is a conjugate cam, okay, which we already discussed in our earlier classifications. Next one is a gravity cam. If the motion of the follower, the return motion of the follower is uh, carried out by the force of gravity or due to the self weight of the uh, follower, then obviously it is known as a gravity cam. If the rise of the cam is achieved by rising the surface of the cam and return of return by the force of gravity or due to the weight of the cam, the cam is known as a gravity cam. Okay, right. However, these cams are not preferred due to their uncertain behavior. So here the constraint is not proper, right? You cannot get uh, uh, proper motion or definite motion at the follower end if you use uh, gravity force as the restoring force of the follower. So that's why these are not widely used, right? So this is uh, the classification of cams based on the shape of the cam, based on the follower movements, and based on the uh, the follower constraints. Right? I hope it is clear. Thank you.